12th Man podcast. We can see all your comments regardless of what, what stream you tuned into. So we'll bring them up on screen as well. Make sure you guys are smashing the likes. Make sure you guys are subscribed to my channel, It's LB. And make sure you are subscribed to Potsy's channel, Football's 12th Man podcast. If you don't know as well, I'm on a, I'm on a weekly uh, podcast show, Monday nights, usually 8pm. Uh, for the race for Europe show, bro. It's bad news, bro. We out, man. Yeah, I didn't. I really didn't expect you boys to go out, man. I can't lie. I really was shocked by that. But with us, never know. There's always a chance with Arsenal, bro. There's always a chance. Um, I feel like there's more shame in us going out. That, like, there's never shame in going out to Real Madrid, in my opinion. Right, no matter how you go out to them, because of the giants and kings of Europe, right. With Bayern Munich, you can probably say the same in terms of their heritage, but the way they're playing and the way they did actually play against us, I think that's the killer for me, bro. Because they weren't amazing. They weren't yeah. shambles, by the way. But I didn't look at them either, either fixture and think, yeah, we ain't playing, that we ain't beating them. They're way too good. And I felt like they dominated our midfield and both legs, bro. And I was really disappointed with Jorginho and Rice in particular because I just felt they got swallowed up in both games. There was no space. There was nothing from Mikel Arteta to try and impress or change anything, try and improve anything. And I'm really frustrated, man. I, I, I'm sad by it, man. I know that Man City might be a bit like, yeah, you know, we won a treble, whatever. But for me, I'm, I'm, I'm gutted, man. And the questions are going to be asked again, LB. They are, bro. The questions are going to be asked again, bro. Yeah, I mean, I've got, I'm going to watch. I've got your game recorded. I'm going to watch it back, man. But like. What what happened then in your match then? Because like in our game, obviously we we dominated the match, man. And like to be honest with you, like we just our finishing was just poor. You know what I mean? It was our finishing that let us down massively. If our finishing was better, we probably we probably win the game. But like in your game, I seen people saying, um, I see I've seen people say on online that like in the second half you guys were just ass. Like did you just guys just crumble or something or what's going on there? Listen, I don't know if crumble's the word because the first word, the first half, I mean, it wasn't amazing, LB. I can't sit there. Some people I see, someone, you know, was saying how great we were. But we weren't great. We dealt with them. Defensively, we were good again, like we have been most of the season. Um, and when you need a star, um, there's turned up in Joshua Kimmich, someone who said that Arsenal don't, shouldn't go for him because he's 29. <laughs> um, and uh, he turned up on the night. I thought him and Kane and Dyer, to be fair. I mean, Eric Dyer and the both the legs. I know people are laughing. If there's two games for him to turn up against, he's been these two. You know, I still think he's trash. Mm -hmm. But at the same time, you have to give credit where credit's due. The guy's turned up against us as he said he was going to. Um, but in terms of our front line, man, it was, it was poor. I mean, when you watch it back, I feel sorry for you having to watch it back, if I'm honest. It was that bad. Us, us up, up top was a shambles. And... I'm going to call them out because they were, it's hard for me to call them out, LB. It hurts me to call these players out because I like them. I do. And I look back over the last few years and I think they've had unbelievable moments. Players like Martinelli, players like Saka, players like Gabriel Jesus. Um, the signing of Kai Havertz, who this season has been pretty disappointing to some, but then in the last few months has really impressed and people are starting to turn the corner of him. He was a statue yesterday. And it was a combination of Mikel Arteta, not really knowing what to do to change things. And some of the players really letting the team down. Um, and I have to mention Bukayo Saka again. You know, I think, and this is a real thing, and, I, and, and, and I've got Kane for this for, for the last seven days. I'm going to keep saying it because I stick by it. I still don't think that's a penalty last week, right? And I think if you look at that moment now, you'll look at Bukayo Saka and think, why the fucking hell did you not just shoot and score? Because that would have allowed that game to continue last night, that goal, right? So yep. I look at that scenario and people will go, but it was a penalty, Dan, it was a penalty. So Saka, whether you think it's a penalty or not, I don't think it is. I think it's 60-40 that it's not. But if you really want to say it's 50-50, go for it. So you've got that moment and you've got his performance in the game and you've got his performance last night. And I just think a lot of people are getting on his case, and rightly so, because he's a top talent and he should be doing better. But I think he's been flogged, man. I think this kid looks so much a shell of himself because this kid is dying. He has been, we are literally ruining this player, in my opinion, because Mikel Arteta is playing him and every single game he's playing him. He doesn't use Fabio Vieira. That's £35 million. Of well, I said this though in the summer, bro. I remember saying in the summer, I did a oh. stream and I was we're like, I want to talk about the different like title rivals and that. And I remember saying Arsenal need to sign a, a right winger to compete with Saka, both two. Enhance Saka's level so he's got competition, but also to give the guy rest. 
The amount of Arsenal fans, bro, that have got to hold L's on that because they, they, I remember them very clearly in the streams going, no, we don't need another one. We're fine. I mean, Saka's all right on his own. We got cover. We got cover. Well, clearly he's reluctant to play Gabriel Jesus on the right wing. I don't want to keep going over this story like, every time we speak and like, speak about Arsenal, but I did. And I know a lot of other City fans told Arsenal fans at the time when you signed him, he ain't a striker, mate. Yeah, you know, there's a reason why we binned him off. It's not because he's like, he fell out all right. He's just not a striker. His best position is the wing. Now, I've got to say, I am quite surprised that, especially this season since he's been back, because Saka's had some poor form at times, that your manager has not tried Gabriel Jesus on the right-hand side. Now, I'm not, before Arsenal fans try and, like, protect Saka, I'm not even saying it as a dig to Saka. I'm saying it as give Saka a rest. Just rest Saka for a couple of games, play Jesus, bring Saka. I'm not saying it is like a form issue, but he seemed, your manager seemed really reluctant, really, really reluctant to, to play in there. And I'm not lying. I'm not trying to bait Arsenal fans into believing that like he's good on the wing and then you play him on the wing and you'll be like, oh, be shot. He's actually a really decent winger. He played there a number of times against some good opposition and played him there. But your manager just seems... I mean, I don't know. I've, the only things I've seen from yesterday is like highlights. I'm gonna, I am going to watch. I know people in the chat saying don't watch the game back, but <laughs> I am going to watch it back because I want to see how you guys got on. But the only, the only thing I've seen from Jesus is someone, Declan Rice, really good drive down the right-hand side. He puts he puts Jesus in. His first touch is absolutely awful. Takes the angle really close. And then he shoots with his right foot and it goes, it goes wide. He's just not a striker, man. And... Um, you know, I, I look at the way Arsenal played this year and I see improvements. You know what I mean? The way that you, I think you're harder to beat against the better teams. And I think the proof's in the pudding. You know what I mean? We've not beaten you once. Um, Bayern Munich beat you, beat you once by a single goal. Um, you're a difficult team to beat. But, you know, we, we, we I remember me and you have loads of conversations earlier in the season. How much is he taken away from the attackers this year to be more protective because is, is it any coincidence Potts here? Let me ask you this. Is it any coincidence that we're speaking about like your attackers? It's not just Saka, by the way, you know, Martin Martinelli this year's dropped off as well. Is there any coincidence that you've become more difficult to beat this year, but your attackers have dropped off? Uh, it could be a coincidence, but I think that I think Arteta is making it more difficult for your attackers. Although, or, or is it just a coincidence that those two go in hand in hand? Yeah, it's a really good question because what people will throw back at you is, well, look at our goal difference. What are you talking about? It's the best. It's the best goal difference in the league. Blah, 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 blah. Uh, big up to Kate, by the way. Um, I, 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 honestly, yes, the goal difference is fantastic, right? We go for an unbelievable run in January onwards. But we have clusters, man. We have these clusters. We don't just lose a game and then bounce back. We've lost to Villa, now we've lost to Bayern Munich. Isn't that very similar to when we lost to Fulham, West Ham and Liverpool in the new year? <laughs> it's an absolute replica. We'll probably end up losing to Wolves or dropping points at Wolves at the weekend now. That's, That's not an easy game, game, by the way. That's exactly. not an easy game. But, brother, our confidence is completely shot with that. But you're right in terms of the style because, do you remember we had a conversation? It must have been about September, October time, and you were like, disappointed by Arsenal, man. I, I thought you were going to come blitz teams. And you've been really this controlled football. And everyone was saying, ah, but there's a plan for that. We know mm. why we're doing that. Because when the end of the season, we'll blitz everyone. We'll just I didn't believe going. that for a second, bro. But you know what? It was mad because we actually did start to blitz teams, right? You did. You did actually blitz teams. Yeah. yeah. The, the problem we've got with that now is that's completely stopped because we look like we've run out of energy again. Now, I saw an, a ridiculous stat, okay, in terms of the use of Mikel Arteta's squad this season, right? Now, I was stunned by this, but actually it complete, completely makes sense. Um, this was Rory, actually. Rory talks football. So we've got eight outfield squad players that have played fewer minutes than Aaron Ramsdale this season. Right. That is mad. Have that you got those players? Who, who, what, what players are those? So these players, I've got a list of them now, right? So where am I? Just make sure. So Thomas Party, injury problems. That's probably a fair one. Emil Smith-Rowe. Why has he not been given more minutes? Reese Nelson has been fit all year <laughs> and he's played 430 minutes for he Arsenal. Get a new contract. What, what and he's a right doing? winger as well. We're talking about Saka, right? Uh, Cedric Suarez and El Nini, they're just squad players. They're not really needed. They're going in the summer, right? Obviously, Timber is another one that is uh, injured and that was unfortunate. And then there's a couple of uh, kind of youngsters that have come in and out of the side, like Maneri, people like that. If you look at Smith Rowe 
Vieira, Fabio Vieira and Reese Nelson. Sorry, Vieira was another one I didn't mention. So Fabio Vieira, Reese um, Nelson, Smith Rowe and Thomas Partey, who is now fit, by the way, have all played less minutes than our backup goalkeeper, who everyone was ranting and raving about, who played a couple of games in the first and then was dropped. So when you look at our squad looking knackered, add to the fact that those players have not been picked, who were, by the way, players that he's either signed long term for like Nelson, yeah, or signed for 35 million like Fabio Vieira or 45 million if you're Thomas Partey. And then add to the fact that we had about 20 days off in Dubai. Why the hell are we knackered? Like we had 20 days off in the new year and now we're tired all of a sudden. So why are we? Where, where's the energy gone? Because it has been. The energy looked zapped against Villa in the second half. We got we got battered, mate. And in the second half against Bayern, we also got battered. Now, I understand people might say, yeah, but look at the players that play with Knox, Erdegaard, Saka. Use your squad, man. But apparently, the fan base have been telling me this squad is fixed. And I said this bench last season was weak, and that's why we won the, why we lost the league. Yeah, or one of the reasons why we lost the league. And unfortunately, the same reasons that we lost the league last year are looking to be the same again in April this year. The in-game management from Mikel Arteta is not good enough. The team selection at times has been questionable and the subs are an absolute madness. I'll come back to that in a minute. And again, we've got a squad that ain't good enough. We've got a squad at the moment that people are telling me is brilliant, but he's not using it or trusting it. Smith Rowe, yeah. when was the last time he, used, he was used? Fabio Vieira, 35 million LB we spent on him and he's not playing him. Reese Nelson, 100k a week. And then the, the the guy throws on Eddie and Ketty at the 87th minute to try and get a goal. Are we like what? What are we not learning about this lad? Most most teams get rid of these players. We stick the number 14 on his back and give him 100k a week. <laughs> this mm. is what we're doing. Lee, Reece Nelson as well, by the way. And this is what I mean. And people can shout go negative, down negative, negative if you want. But I'm just saying what I'm seeing, and I'm saying what I've been seeing all of the last year, most of his reign. Like, let's be real. When Eddie come on, every Arsenal fan just went, we're out. <laughs> Do you know what I mean? It's honestly, it's mad. It's but, mad. But, you, you, but it, for me, I, I look at your team and obviously I'm an outsider, yeah? So obviously for the Arsenal fans listening, like obviously I'm just saying this is what I see. It, it appears to me that he's got some players there that he doesn't trust. The problem that I have with it is he signed the players. Mm -hmm. And Ketty are given a new deal. Um, What's the winger? The winger called Nelson. Nelson, he gave a new deal, and he signed Vieira. So there those three players, if you didn't want them, they didn't need to be there because he could have sold Enkatia in the summer. He, he could, he probably would have got a decent amount of money for him as well. Um, what's he called? The the winger again? Sorry, what's his name? Reese Nelson. Reese Nelson. Is is a thing? I tell you, I trust him. Yeah, I remember watching the game Arsenal earlier in the season. I think it was Fulham, and I'm pretty sure Reese Nelson played, and it was Nelson on the left. And it was Saka on the right. And Saka drops an absolute stinker. Reese Nelson actually played quite well, right? Yeah. Who did he take off? Who did he take off? You know who he took off. You he know took who? off Reece, yeah, he took off Reese Nelson and left Saka on there. And I was doing that. I was doing it with Martinelli, bro. He did it with Martinelli. He does yeah, it again last night. But this is the thing. What he needs, surely, he needs to start trusting the players. And, like, he, he, you know, he, he keeps on playing Saka. It, and I'm not saying you need to play Reese Nelson out there, but try Jesus out there, drop a player, try, try something else. You know what I mean? And I just look at him. And... No, but, but this is the thing, right? Here's another one for you, right? Let me ask you a question now. How many Manchester City players have started 40 matches this season? 4 0. Give me a number. Started. Started. I just what? played. Started 40 matches this season. How do you how find that people? out? I can find out how many people so just, played. You, for. you could find it out, but just have a guess. How many players do you reckon? 40. I'd say about. Three. Okay, zero is the answer, right? Oh, you got the facts. I've got the facts, yeah? Here. How many Arsenal players have started 40 matches? This is about not trusting a squad. Just have a guess. You thought three for City. That's fairly low. That's fairly fair, fair enough. You've I'd guessed say, about that. Maybe. I'd say probably seven. Bang on. Bang on. So seven players for Arsenal have started 40 games this season. Manchester City, zero, right? Because they've got a squad they trust. The seven players are Gabriel, Saliba, Erdegaard, White, Rice, Saka and Havertz. That means that those players have absolutely no cover that Arteta trusts. So nobody, he doesn't trust anybody on the right-hand side if Saka don't play. He's not trusting Havertz. Uh, to be fair to Havertz, he's been playing in a few number of positions, right? 
Ben White, we've not had any anyone there. Saliba and Gabriel, he's not trusted anybody else to cover for them because Kivio has been playing left back and he's the only one we've got. Otherwise, you have to shifty, shifty one of them in the middle. Mm -hmm. So this is why we need to either trust the squad or he's got to go out and sort, sort it out. You cannot have seven players playing 40 games for Arsenal where the, the rivals of Man City we're trying to catch up with have had zero because they've got rotation. Now, that doesn't mean that Man City haven't started them 30 times or 38 times, but it means 40 matches, right? Arsenal have had those players. That is a maddening stat. And mm -hmm. we have got a manager that does not trust the squad. So what are they doing there? Why have we signed Reese Nelson for? Why have we signed Fabio Vieira for 35 million? When Madison was 40 million, by the way, and that was a year after. What could we have got him for when he was at Leicester the year before? This is the thing. And, and, and what will happen, LB, is people will go, well, none of this was coming out in, in February and on oh, March when you were winning, winning games. Exactly. Listen to the last bit because we were winning games. When you don't win games, you question why you don't win games. And this is, again, looking very similar to last season. Arsenal looked tired, didn't they? Arsenal looking knackered. Why is that? Why is that? Because he's been flogging some of these players to death all season. And they're 22 years old. Our average squad is 24, 25. It's mad, brother. Honestly, man, it, it's it's mad. Yeah, no, nah, listen, it's 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 the Arsenal merry-go-round, the same shit every year, isn't it? You know what I mean? It's 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 absolutely insane. Let me come to some of these super chats. Um, built to Billy says, according to UEFA coefficient points, Leverkusen have won the league at the perfect time. First time the Bundesliga is being rated as the best league due to their European performance, it seems, says Billy with the donation, bro. Big up to you, man. Appreciate the, the, the super chat. And yeah, listen, Leverkusen absolutely slammed it, aren't they? Fair play to them. If they go and win the treble, obviously Europa League treble, but still a treble, that is crazy. Um, especially if they do unbeaten league as well. Um, big up Nathan says, I think last night will propel City to the league. Well, what's your thoughts on City then, bro? You said you was you, you thought City was going to go through. Nathan's saying that he reckons that'll, that'll kick us on to... to to the league, I, I remember I seen your your uh, your fan cam at the weekend. Obviously, I actually thought, to be honest with you, bro, I, was, I know I said this to you on chat, yeah, on, on WhatsApp and that, but I'll just say it for the stream. I actually thought that the way the people around you was like acting as if you said some mad madness. I thought like all I hear is kind of like reasonable things. Like, what's your take on the title race? What's your take on City from here? And um, yeah, just just touch on that, bro, because I thought that was strange. Because I was watching you, I watched a fan cam on AFTV. If you don't guys guys don't know, Dan does um, fan cams on AFTV. I watched it and I thought, why is why are these people saying this to Dan next to him? Like he's, he, you know, I thought everything you said was reasonable. Personally, I'm not just saying that because you're my mate. I'm saying I, I, I cook you if, if you say something like stupid. Yeah, yeah, like, yeah. No, you do, I yeah. thought it was. I, I thought it was kind of strange. Like, what's your take on it, man? Well, first of all, I didn't watch the game last night. I only saw extra time and penalties. And if I'm honest with you, bro, I just saw two teams that looked absolutely knackered. They give mm -hmm. their all. I saw people going down with cramp. I saw some of the City players. I thought City looked fitter than Real Madrid. I must say that. Um, and then penalties is literally a flip of a coin, man, isn't it? Like, let's be real. I looked at the penalties. I mean, when Edison, you know, is taking penalties ahead of your players, you're thinking, what's going on there? But that was an unbelievable penalty, by the way. But Bernardo Silva, I had no confidence in him taking a penalty. And for some reason, I just said to me, Dad, I've got no real confidence with Kovacic here. But, you know, I... I thought Man City had the better penalty takers, and I was wrong, <laughs> basically, um, because they obviously lost it. Jude Bellingham, by the way, people can talk about Saka and Foden and Rice. This kid, man, Jesus Christ. Like The elite mentality, the geezer can hardly walk. There was one stage he was lying on Edison, like, I'm done, mate. Just let me lay here for a minute. Yeah, he didn't do much in, in, in the two ties. I mean, I, I, as I say, I didn't see the, I didn't see the, the whole two legs, but, um, but a, a baller, anyway, elite. When it comes to Man City... Um, from what I hear, bro, you should have won the game. Um, everybody was talking to me before I'd spoken to you about how KDB and Haaland missed, Foden missed a chance as well. Um, so Man City dominated from what I can hear the game, but didn't go through. Um, Manchester City, I honestly thought you were going to win a treble, and I think you would have. Whoever wins that, I said, would win the Champions League, and I stand by it. I think Real Madrid now win it. I think Manchester City would have won it as well. Um, you would definitely have beaten Bayern Munich, and you definitely would have beaten PSG or Dortmund. So I stay the same about Real Madrid, um, excuse me. But listen, Manchester City, I still think will win their last six games. Um, I was on Mar Mo's stream yesterday with Martin, big up to Martin, and we both agreed that for some reason we see Fulham away as probably one of the most difficult places because it's been a strange place for Everyone teams to Everyone keeps go. on saying that. Yeah. I, I, I don't, but I don't know. I'm not saying, I don't, I'm saying we'll, we'll piss it. I just don't see it as the like one of the easiest 
Because I understand why people will look at it, right? Martin says to me yesterday, Man City are going to drop points. The reason Manchester City are going to win the league still is because Arsenal and Liverpool will still drop points. So I'm kind of on that train as well. I'm kind of looking at that. Um, Here we go. Yeah, so for me there, I know people, I mean, I heard Hugh on the Big Six and maybe even yourself saying, oh, Forest away, don't know. You will beat Forest away, right? Let me, let's have it right. You'll beat Brighton away because they are awful. Oh, well, no, no, no. Can I just quickly say, just for clarity, I expect us to win our next four games. If we don't win our next four games, that is very disappointing. I mean, not being funny yet, but Brighton were awful against you. You should beat them about 8-0 that game. Forest, whilst they're scrapping to stay in the division, you know what I mean? I'm not doing no humble situation. Like, it's you're going for a title. You're playing a team at the bottom of the table. Like, you should be winning this game. Like, yes, it could be tricky, but you should be winning. Wolves, because it's at home, are back us to win. If that was away, very different. Fulham away, I actually, I think that'll be easier than people are making out. But th- that, that's why I think, like, it was strange because people are going on like, oh, well, City can drop points. City can drop points. Yes, City could drop points. City could lose at Tottenham. But then the only way you guys win the league is if you win six out of six. Yeah. You know what I mean? And that's where, and then I look at your fixtures. I think your fixtures, like, I actually don't think people are like chatting about how difficult your fixtures are. I think every single one of those fixtures is grim. But like, that, that's would why you I be impressed strange. if we won all six. Would you be stunned yes. if we won all six? Yeah. I, I would be stunned if you won all six. Yeah, so would I. I wouldn't yeah, be stunned so if Liverpool won all six. I'd be still a bit surprised because I think they've thrown in a towel. Um, I'd be stunned if you won our six. I'd be surprised if Liverpool won our six, which means City don't even need to win our six. So City can go to Spurs, yeah, and lose like we always do. And so long as we win our other five, we'll still win the league. That's why I just found it like... That was what I was saying on the fan cam, bro. That was what I was saying on the fan cam. Yeah, but that's why I found it strange, bro, on the fan cam. When when I was watching your fan cam, I was like, he's not even necessarily saying that City... Well, you did say City will win six out of six, but even if City did drop points, that means you've got to win the six out of six. I found it very. I thought it was like that's about weird. Yeah, I, I think people have disrespected Man City, or people have said like around me like, Phew, "Man City are dropping points." Huh? How can you disrespect this team that have gone on pretty much a perfect run for the last few years? Uh, honestly, I can't. And do you know what? People will say, well, Man City dropped points to Brighton and Brentford last season. Yeah, the title was done. Yeah, the title was <laughs> the over. Title, the title yeah. was over, man. Like, do you really think that if the title was still going ahead, that they you would have dropped those points? No, of course you wouldn't have. You would have gone for it. So, listen, I, I, I think you're going to win them all. I do think Fulham is a strange one because I do feel like they've at Craven Cottage. You just don't know what Fulham's going to turn up. I do think that's a bit more of a Marmite one. It's like a, we could smash them or we could bloody drop points here. And I don't mean Fulham will beat you 2-0 or something. I mean, you mm. could do like a 1-1 or a 2-2 or a St. Mad. That's all I'm saying. Um, I don't see Forest away or Brighton away as being mad. Personally, I disagree with you wholeheartedly about Spurs away. I think that's going to be an easy game for you. I don't know if you've been impressed with them of late, but I think Ange is being found out a bit. And I think Man City will beat them. Um, but let's be real. The way things are going, you might not have to beat them. Mm. <laughs> because like you say, it could be over by then, bro. Like the way that we well, are... If we win our next four games... Yeah, if we win our next four games and you drop points in, in either of those four games... Oh, five games that you have. Because we play four, right? But you play five. If we win our next four... And you drop points in any of your next five games, which is highly possible, and I would say probable, then yeah, we we the league's done before we even go to Spurs. Let, let's um in fact before we speak about Liverpool, yeah, because they are still in the title race. I I think that they're kind of yeah. look like they're they're, they're done. But let, I want to speak about Liverpool. Before we do, guys, make sure you um make sure you drop a like on the stream. Uh, we've got uh, 520 people tuned in on Football's 12th Man podcast. We are dual streaming this on, on Dan's channel and, and on my channel, It's LB. Do me a favour, yeah? If you're watching on Dan's channel, Football's 12th Man podcast, quickly go over to It's LB, type it in YouTube and subscribe to my channel. And of course, if you're watching on my channel, It's LB, make sure you go over to the Football 12th Man podcast, that's Dan's channel, and get a subscribe there. It's completely free to help support us both. Um yeah, it'd be, it'd be kind of rude for us not to speak about Liverpool because they are they are obviously level on points with you. They're, they're more than capable of winning the league um, and they have easier fixtures than you as well. I, I don't even think that's up for debate. But I don't know what your take is on Liverpool. To me, I just look at Liverpool, bro, and I just think that I think they're done. I, I think that they just look like a team that has been playing at 110% all season and they just don't have anything left in the tank. That's And of course, now they've got four away games in a row. Atalanta, Fulham, Everton, West Ham. I mean, if they win all four of those, which is unlikely in my opinion, four away games in a row, then, then maybe we'll talk. But 
I don't know what's your vibe. I, I just I just think they, they they look checked out to me. They look like they've gassed. They, they, they you know they've they, they've gassed out a bit. Yeah. Um. First of all, I want to say a huge, massive congratulations to Jurgen Klopp on what I think has been a magnificent achievement thus far. I personally didn't see Liverpool going this far in the title race, but the way that, especially with the injuries he's had, the way he's utilised this squad, it's basically the opposite to Arteta. He's actually had faith in some of the youngsters and got through them. You know, I'm talking about players like that fans, players like Connor Bradley, players like Harvey Elliott, players like Curtis Jones, players that, let's be real, some are not heard of, but some are like, they're not good enough for Liverpool. And actually, he's going to win a Carabao Cup and he's put Liverpool in a title race and in a quarterfinal of Europa. So, do you know what? Fair play. But when it comes to it now, I kind of look at it and I just think, yeah, that was why I never thought that Liverpool squad was going to be good enough to come to the end anyway. And it could do. It could surprise us, right? But I'm kind of with you. I feel like those away fixtures are going to get in the way of it. Liverpool got two things now. They bounce back and go, no, let's do it for Klopp, as everyone laughs about. Or what they do is they relax and actually go, do you know what? We kind of feel like it's over. Let's give our all and see what happens. And they might surprise a couple of people and go, do you know what? Actually, wow, Liverpool got on a run now because there's no pressure. And this is the problem sometimes. Arsenal were the same. As soon as it's like, go on then, go on then, Arsenal. Oh, when we're chasing, it's like, mm. like some Arsenal fans now think Arsenal will just go and win everything now. And then like, well, well, we'll blow it at the last thing. The minute, I guarantee you, if that happens, and Liverpool might be the same, Liverpool and Arsenal go win five in a row, we'll crumble when it matters. Because we've proven time and time again under Arteta that that's what happens with us. And I've seen in the last few years that Pep gets a better o'clock nine times out of ten. So that's why I just have your favourites now. But I don't think we should disrespect Liverpool because they've got some good players, right? I've been really impressed with a couple of them, like Van Dijk, McAllister. But I look at the, the fixtures there. They've got Fulham away at the weekend. I've actually got that down as a draw, LB. I really have. I've got that down as a draw. They give a real good account of themselves, Fulham, against Liverpool in the, in the twice, three times they've played them already this season. Because so they played them home and away in the Carabao Cup in the semi-final, mm -hmm. if you remember. And they were very, very um, good there. And they really, really give them a good game at Anfield where they won in the last kick of the game from Trent, if you remember. They were 2-1 mm -hmm. up. So I think that could be difficult for them. Everton, I'm sorry, I know that's a derby, but they are complete garbage, mate. Everton. They I are agree. I, 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 I keep saying this to Hossam. Every time I do a stream with Hossam, I'm like, bro, stop talking about Everton, man. You're going to smash them. Yeah, they're, they're terrible. Um, as are West Ham at the moment. I know Lawless won't like to hear it. And he likes to think that they can do well against Liverpool, but I, I don't see that happening. The way Liverpool, uh, West Ham are defending, it's actually quite shambles. Well, I think, I think, bro, let me just stop you there. If they drop points to Fulham at the weekend, it's done. Uh, I agree. I agree. Yeah. It's 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 done for them. If they yeah, drop I points, I think it's the same for you. But, but uh, it's, the same, you guys... it's the same for us. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Because the thing is, look, you play Wolves and Chelsea before we play Brighton. Yeah. So if there's any chance Arsenal could win the league now, you have to win your next two because that'll put you top of the Premier League. Um, that'll put you four points ahead of us by the time we play Brighton. And if there's any chance of you winning the league, you got to ramp up that pressure. So by the time we go to Brighton, even though we've got two games in hand, you know what I mean? We're literally going, shit, we're four, we're four points behind. Now, yeah, we have a game in hand. We'll take it. But we have two games in hand, obviously, before we play Brighton. But if there's any chance of us not winning this league, you've got to win your next two games and put that pressure on. Who, who is your next two games? Wolves and... Chelsea. Oh, Wolves and Chelsea. Mm. Tough. I mean, they're all tough, like you say. Tottenham, but the only ones that I would say that you'd like to think Arsenal will be safe in are Everton and Bournemouth. Now, Bournemouth have done really well this season. I don't look at that and go, that'll be a breeze and a walk in the park. However, they're the only team in that section that aren't playing for anything. Maybe Wolves. I know Wolves can still sneak Europe, but Bournemouth can't, I don't think, right? Realistically. So Bournemouth are a little bit on the beach now. They can't go down. They can't really get Europe. Everton are fighting for their lives. Man United are trying to get Europe. Tottenham are trying to get Champions League. Chelsea are trying to get Europe. And obviously Wolves have got a little smidgen they can get in as well. So all of those teams are actually playing for something. So that's why I'll say Bournemouth and Ever Everton, let's be real. If you can't beat Everton, I mean, the only reason we won't beat Everton is if no, we've got nothing to play for and the title's done and we'll just go out and be on the beach. Mm. Do you know what I mean? But still, mm -hmm. you'd like to think we can. So, look, man, we, we've 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 had nothing to throw away this year. I can't sit there and say that any of these teams have bottled it, right? I really don't feel like any of the teams have bottled this season. If there was, if if one of our, two of the three, sorry, are not going to win the league. I can't sit there and say that Arsenal and Liverpool, let's say, have bottled the league this season. Because mm -hmm. we weren't, you know... 10 points clear, 8 points clear, 5 points clear, or even 4 points clear at any stage, right? So I don't think you can ever say that you've bottled it. I just think it's disappointing that we haven't been able to get across the line again, bro. I can't lie. I really do. And, you know, people have said to me, what do you do with Arteta now? What do you do? Name me some names and I'll say yay or nay to them. But I want to be seeing what this guy does at the end of May. 
yeah because if you offer me Ancelotti and you offer me Zidane and you offer me Hansi Flick it's going to be very hard for me to say oh how can I prove that they're going to win something with them I can't prove it but I say we've got more of a better chance because you're going to install some winning mentality in it because they've got mm. a CV that says win 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 Arteta has got got an FA Cup once with Emery's side but I ain't won anything since then do you know what I'm saying so that's where I'm at like truly that is where I'm at Nah, listen, I think Arsenal fans are in a difficult position with Arteta. I do, because I yeah. obviously you you were the banter club for so long, right? Arteta come in, it wasn't great. I know you won the FA Cup, but it wasn't great for a couple of years. And now he's got you competing at the very top. You know what I mean? He's got you to the Champions League quarterfinals and a respectable performance, bad result, the respectable performance against against Bayern. In, well, result, respectable result. You only got beat 1-0. Like, that can happen to anyone, right? He's got you competing for the, the, the Premier League. The question is, and, and this is the question that Arsenal fans have to ask themselves, is can it be better? That's a simple question. Now, the answer to that is, yeah, it can be better. But you got to, you know, what manager is going to bring it in and, and, and be better? And if you change the manager, yeah, if you sack Arteta and say, you took us as far as you can go, you get a manager in, you could get better and win the league or you could get worse. You could stay the same, but you could get worse. And I just feel like there's a lot of, I think there's a lot of Arsenal fans that are not prepared to go back to that banter era. And there are some of them maybe are more just happy, just competing and not winning anything just because they're not, they're not the, the banter club anymore. But at can some I, point... Can I, can I put a question about that though? Ban, the banter yeah. era. Yeah. What's, what's different between the banter era and what we're doing now? Because in the banter era, you were getting smacked up off Bayern Munich. 10 okay. 1 aggregate, 10 2 well, I agree with that. In he terms was of smashing you 5 0 at the Etihad, yeah, something like that. So you were not, you were not a lot. competitive team. No one, no one went into the start of the season when Arsenal could win the league here. No one thought Arsenal could win the Champions League here. Okay, so I agree with that. In terms of where we finished, it's not that different other than the last season to where we were as a banter club is what I'm saying. So what I'm saying is basically my point is I'm not looking at that banter era and this era and going, we are levels now. I mean, we are so far. Look at what we're winning. Look at where we can be. I'm not seeing that yet. And I think we could be under a manager that's winning. The problem is, yeah, listen, people would say, and I don't think many people have answered this question. Okay, let's say you get what you want and you get another manager in. Let's just say it's Angelotti, right? And I love Angelotti. I mean, he's unreal, right? He's incredible. It goes a bit wrong for us. What happens then, then? Well, you get rid of him and you get someone else in. Yeah, I'm, yeah, I'm yeah. so fixated about, about staying managers for five, ten years. That doesn't happen uh, anymore, bro. That doesn't happen no, anymore. No. I, I know, I know. It's it's it, it is a weird one. I agree. Like if you get the manager in and it doesn't work, yeah, you just you just say, all right, it's not worked, so we'll, we'll move on and get a, a, and try a different manager. But yeah, th that's that's the question that you've got to ask. The, the one thing that I think Arsenal fans should should really not do is be like, oh, Arteta is growing as a manager. I'm gonna minute. I'm gonna minute. I'm gonna minute. I'm gonna minute. Arsenal are a massive football club. Yeah, I'm not twerking. I'm not twerking for Arsenal, by the way. Arsenal are a massive football club with a massive audience of fans, yeah? You should not be a football club that's being managed by a manager who is trying to grow his CV or, you know, like we're trying to help Arteta. No, 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 no. That's not, that's not the way it should be working, man. That's LB. You're not, you're not, with all due respect, you're not like a Brighton or like a like a lower league team where like you might try a manager in and help the manager grow with the club. Like you're you're a team that should be getting managers in to win. Do you know what I mean? Because it's just it's, that for me is just absolutely ridiculous. And, and this is the thing: we, we've got a manager in to challenge right now. Job done. In fact, the, the process was we will be challenging. Process is done. Completed it. Well done. Successful. We're now challenging. How do we win? Because I've waited 20 years for a Premier League title. I've waited 30 years for a European trophy. And that was a Cup Winners' Cup against Palmer in 94. That wasn't even a Champions League, right? Mm. I've waited 30 years for a League Cup. Yeah, fair enough. We've got FA Cups. We've got 14 of them. We've done that. Completed it, mate. But I want to be going and winning major honours like Champions Leagues. and Because I was told in 2002 when Peter Hillwood, bless him, said, we're going to move to this stadium to compete with the best. Teams like, dare I say it, Bayern Munich. Since mm -hmm. that conversation in 2002, we've played them one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight times. We've played them. How many times we've we beaten them? Zero times. So mm -hmm. if we're competing with Bayern Munich and we play them eight times because we've moved to the best, best stadium that we could and we've lost every single attempt at playing, them, I would say it was a pretty failed project. Yeah. So, yes, we can compete with Bayern Munich now. That's not the, the, the debate. Of, that's not debatable. 
10 there was bloody 10 2 on aggregate last time we played we, we played them this time they got they nicked it by a goal right that was a very different Bayern Munich. Yeah, it was a different Arsenal, but it was a very different Bayern Munich. So what we're saying is that we've got closer, but Bayern Munich have got worse, and they still beat us. <laughs> so like, it's it's honestly, man, it's poor. It's poor, bro. It's poor. But fans don't like to hear it, man. Fans don't like to hear it. Yeah, man. This is a, this is a super chat that came in on your channel, bro. It's from Sam oh, says up, Stan. It says, uh, watching live for the first time in years, plus 100 million on rice in the same year is symbolic of the Cronkies aren't messing around this time. Well, they might not be messing around, but there's still a question about whether or not that manager is the correct manager to, to, to have. And if you're saying that the, the owners are not messing around, then you need to make sure you've got you got the right manager in. I want to ask uh, big up Sam for the super chat, man, that that, that flown in on, on the 12th man channel. Sort of in that, what, what Sam's saying there, and also Mighty Win says, I always say, be careful what you wish for, right? For the fans at Arsenal, Wenger, We send that under Wenger as well, by the way. Yeah. What so, 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 okay. Let, 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 let's talk about this then, because I think Sam's probably. I don't know Sam. Correct me if I'm wrong, mate, but I feel like he's he might be an outer in guy. Um, yeah. What, what, so. what would it take for Arsenal fans who are outer are in here? And maybe the chat can help me out here, because obviously Dan's Dan's not an outer in necessarily. What is it going to take before you actually pull the trigger and say we need to we need to gamble? Because he's been here what four and a half years. Is um. You know, he should have had top four two years ago, bottled that. He should have won the league last year, didn't. If he don't win the league this year, it's another another year with without without a major honour. Is next year the last time? Or are we going to be in a situation where if next year we're in the same position and Arsenal still haven't won the league, are we going to be saying the same thing where, oh, well, we'll just we'll give him another year? Like how long before you say, you know, let's move it up, let's move it on. Let's try well, someone else. Apparently it's next year. I asked that question. A lot of people in my chat said next year, Dan. But last year, they said, if he doesn't win anything this year, then there'll be questions asked. But now the yeah. answer is next year. So uh, I don't know, man. Listen, I, I understand what Sam's saying about the Cronkies, and I'm glad they saw that last night because I hope it shocked them as how poor their project was because that is what we're supposed to be doing, getting towards the stage of winning this competition that we've gone out to a poor Bayern Munich side with, right? Now, it's fair enough saying spend money, spend money, because we've spent a lot of money. we spent more than Man City in the last five years, by the way. That might shock people. We've spent more money than Manchester City. Now, people will argue and go, yeah, but that's because Man City has spent five years extra than the, the five years before that. We're still trying to catch up. I get that argument and I understand it, right? Because it is mad. But if you was to actually sell the Man City squad and sell the Arsenal squad, we'd actually make more money because our squad's worth more than theirs, more, more than yours, right? Now, obviously, age comes into it and that's why it's worth more than yours, right? Because obviously, our higher ceiling and potential we've got. So we've spent a lot of money. It ain't that Cronkies ain't spent money, right? I think the Cronkies, for me, has been the lack of ambition that has got me. That's what it's been at. Show me you want to win. None of this top four nonsense. None of this, we want to try and compete for top four. Our target is top six. Our target is four. Our target should always be to win. Yeah? Mm -hmm. I know you've got to be realistic about it. You're not going to win with Mustafis and Bellerins, right? But at the same time, you should aim to win that. What are you going to do about that to change it? And when we're playing team players, like paying players like Nek and Ketia and Nelson to stay at the club, that ain't ambition to win. That's just securing top four. Because those players have done top four. We've got mm -hmm. that. Where are we going to go to win it now? Now, the Declan Rice signing was one of those. And maybe the Timber one was. I'm not so sure because we didn't get enough to sign to see him this season. But I'm not so sure that the Havertz, that David Rea, and some of the other ones, the Kivios, Jorginho's, has been enough ambition to win it, in my opinion. So I want to see what they're going to do with that, man. And I also want to see what happens when we do fail. What do the Cronkies do? Do they back him again? Or do they go, do you know what? This project's looking like it's come to it. it. Curtis Shaw put out a tweet today, right? I read it. Mark Hughes was good at Man City, but he weren't great. You needed Man City to Man Mancini, <laughs> Mancini, should I say, to lift the trophy, right? Mm -hmm. Brendan Rodgers was pretty good at Liverpool, but they needed Klopp to lift it. Ranieri was pretty good at Chelsea, but needed Mourinho to lift it. Are we in a situation, Arsenal, yeah, where Mikel Arteta could be one of those managers and we need somebody to come and lift it for well, it could be it, 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 well yeah that and that's that's ultimately the question listen for me i think this summer here's where i am i mean I, I i'm i'm very much i see both sides and i'm not saying this to sit on the fence i'm honestly not like i don't buy this whole thing when arsenal fans are are, are at it out you know what i mean i i completely understand why they're at it out but i also understand why people might want to give him a bit more time 
for me, as a sort of neutral looking in at this, yeah, I'm looking at what he does in the transfer window this year. He needs depth. He needs more depth, right? So a couple of extra players, three players, I'd say, good quality players. And then for me next year, that's it then. There's no more excuses after next year. If he doesn't win it next year, I'm sitting here saying, if you don't sack him, you just, you're just accepting challenging is better than, than actually winning stuff. So I know, I know, I don't know if you, you, you might think that's wrong because I don't know if you want him gone now, but like, I, I'm open well, I'm, to the I'm idea. Thinking, of I've got to wait for the end of the season to see what actually does happen because there is a mad, mad thing. We could win the league, you know, people want him out now and we could actually win the league, but I don't think we will. Um, and also, LB, it depends who's coming in, man. You know, Cronkies, let's go right. Okay, Cronkies have had enough of Arteta this season. We, we thought you should have won it this year, so off you go. Mm. We're bringing in Deserby. Nah, just keep Arteta. Like, do you know what I mean? It has to be the right appointment for me that says I am a winner and I only accept winning. Well, Ancelotti is going to be available not this summer, next summer, because Javi Alonso is going to go Ancelotti oh. the year after, isn't it? Perfect. Then there we go. Oh, that and, and listen, I, I, I. And people in the chat say, LB, would you accept that City? I, I probably wouldn't accept it at City. I wouldn't. But what I'm saying is, I'm saying that if I was to give Arteta more time, ne there's no more excuse after next year. That's the point that I'm making. But I probably wouldn't accept it either. It's different with City, though, bro, isn't it? Because if Pep Guardiola wins nothing this year, you're not going to sack him, are you? Because he's got No, no, no. But that's what they're saying. They're saying if you didn't win anything five years in a row. Oh, OK. Know. OK. OK. okay. Different scenario. And, and I, I probably, you know, you chat, the chat's probably right. I probably wouldn't accept it. But what I'm, that's that's the point I'm making. The point I'm making is, for me, there can be no more. If, if I'm sat here next year in the same situation speaking to you and Arsenal still not won anything again, there can be no more, in my opinion. Oh, just more give him time. an extra year. More no, time. Yeah, yeah, if, yeah. If Ancelotti's available as well. Yeah, because that's another thing as well that you've got to look at. You say, if Arteta goals, who's going to come into the team? You don't want a Deserby or a Graham Potter. You've got to get like a, a win-now manager. Uh, and there's not that many around, you know what I mean, uh, anymore. So, But in, in a year's time, there probably will be in Ancelotti. So, you know, there's going to be no excuses. Listen, let me come to some of these super chats, man. Listen, a couple of people, bro, pulling you up on the Bayern Munich thing, bro. I don't know if that's uh, big up to Sagar and AMT saying you beat Bayern 2 0 at home. Uh, and then yeah, AMT, 0405, 2012, 13, 15, 16, three times Arsenal beat Bayern Munich. So maybe you did actually beat him, bro. Yeah, yeah, yeah. No, 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 no. Let, let me pull them up on that. We've, we've won a leg, but going through the competition in terms of the Champions League. We haven't gone through against them. Oh. So we might have beaten them. Like So say, for example, we won 2-0. We lost 3-1 in the other leg. So we went through an away goal. They went through an away goals. Got you. So that was what happened. So we have beaten Bayern Munich before. Yeah, of course we have. In a, like a okay. one-off game. But across two legs, we've, we've they've gone, they've yeah. progressed and we haven't. Yeah. Okay. Uh, Sagar says, next year, if he gets one centre-back, one mid, one right wing, one striker. Well, he's got Timber coming back in. Right? So that's going to help your back line. Right? Because mm. obviously, Kivior's now proven that he can be a left-back. Right? Mm -hmm. You've got Timber who can play there. Um, you know, Kivior, can he can he deputize for Gabriel or Saliba if 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 one of them gets injured not or suspended? Saliba. He has done for Gabriel, but we need a centre half that can come in up centre half as well, not one of these. Oh, I can play there, sir. No, I want a centre no, half no. that actually okay. is a centre. So Arsenal need a centre back. Yeah. 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 Um, they probably need another midfielder. Yeah. Left they eight. Need, you need and then, to, to be honest with you, I don't think you need a right winger if he's prepared to play Jesus there. But you do need a striker. Facts. You need a striker. So, bin off Enketia, get a striker in, and then have your new striker, and then Jesus as a backup, yeah? Jesus yeah. isn't a bad backup striker. He's just not a good, you know, because, listen, a backup striker is never going to be that good. Yeah, there's a backup. He's on a the bench. There's a reason he's a backup striker. But if you have Jesus as a backup striker, yeah. but he can also play right wing, that's, I think that's yeah. more than fine. But you need, you need a bagsman. You need a bagsman. Agreed. Um, big up to Chris as well with a super chat on a 12th man. Says, uh, why keep Arteta when he's never won anything? LB is right. We should never have a rookie coach for so long. The si the signings are a dismal waste of money. There the, were some of the signings that are, are, are poor. That's right. But yeah, the, the, the thing that I have a problem with, and I'm not even an Arsenal fan, but it's when I hear Arsenal fans saying, oh, he's growing. He's getting better as a manager. And he, he, that might be true, but like, you're meant, yeah, it's not meant to be that way. Like, the manager's meant to be the guy, you know what I mean? He's not meant to be like, he's not a player. You do that with players, isn't it? You do that with players, like, players, you know, when they're young, they come in, they might make a few mistakes and that, but they get better and you understand it. We've never done that with managers. I swear, we've never done that with managers. 
weird. Um, big up to Jay says pain from yesterday isn't bad because we were two because we're two points up in the league. A golden Premier League uh, for four Premier Leagues in a row and FA Cup um, is one for the history books. Treble would have been an overachievement. Oh yeah, treble. The way we played this year, man. If we would have won a treble, I said it would have been a better treble than last year. Because last year we actually was mint, you know what I mean? Like we deserved the treble last year. Like this year, if we would have won the treble, it would have been absolutely crazy, Jay. So completely agree with that. What do you think of this? Apparently, there's a rumor going around that City win four Premier Leagues in a row. They're going to give us a golden trophy. Is that actually is that serious? I thought he was mucking around. I know apparently, apparently it's a rumor that's going around. Yeah, probably will, man, because they give us one for the invincible. Um, I, well, so I actually think they should have given us one for the hundred points. I actually think they shouldn't give you one for four Premier Leagues in a row, but I think we should have got one for a hundred points because hundred points is. That's just ridiculous, but like four Premier Leagues in a row, like what's why they've randomly given us that? Like I would, I think it, I think it was more deserved for a hundred points than it was for four Premier Leagues in a row. Yeah, you got to ask yourself which is the harder one to do, and it probably is hundred points. We definitely hundred points, points is absolutely <clears throat> insane. Like that's fucking yeah, that's is. crazy. Yeah. Off Meta says a Pep two year contract extension will cheer me up. Says when is his contract up? When is his up? When is it up? Next season. But he's going to sign, is he? Well, who knows. Oh, I hope he goes, man. <laughs> I know you do. I know everyone does. I have no idea if he's going to sign. I'm not hearing. I'm not hearing any news. City fans blaming Bernardo and Kovacic should just leave. No, 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 no. So this is the thing, Jay. You shouldn't blame them. Blame whoever picked them to take the penalty in the first place. In my opinion, like they should never have been taking the penalties. Kovacic less so. I don't mind Kovacic too much. I still don't think he should have took one. I said this before he took the penalties. By the way. Um, but that not not so much Kovacic. Bernardo, I just felt like I said it in the watch along before we even got to penalties. Yeah, I said, don't if we get to penalties, don't let Bernardo Silva take a penalty. Um, but he had the balls to step up and take one. So I'm never gonna slag him off. Um, you know, he had the balls to step up. Um, he just he didn't put it away. So it is what it is. You know, I mean, I'm not gonna slag him off for missing the penalty, bro, when he's got the courage to step up in in the quarterfinal of the Champions League against Real Madrid. Um Beyond says maybe Arsenal have scouting issue uh, concerning Fabio Vieira, but who will leave this summer, Dan? Anyway, great show, LB. Big up to you, uh, Beyond. Well, I, I can say from a City point of view, Enketia needs to leave, Reese Nelson needs to leave, and Vieira needs to leave. That's three. Yeah, listen, there's more than that, unfortunately, mate. Um, we're going to have to get rid of, no joke, I'm talking eight or nine players here, because some of them have got to go. Uh, Cedric and El Nenny are leaving on a three, so that's two. Ramsdale will go. That'll be one. Tierney yeah. will go. That'll be another. Uh, Nuntavage, La Conga on loan. They will go. Marquinhos on loan. They will go. Patino on loan. He will go. I think it will probably be an interesting decision between Party and Jorginho. I expect one of them probably will leave. I don't know mm. which one, but I expect that will happen. And then I think the free Halem boys will go. I think those two you mentioned in um, Nelson and, and uh, in Ketia, and I think Smith Rowe or Vieira, one of them will go as well. I don't know which Smith one. Rowe's falling off a cliff. I tell you, man, I know I told you this before, bro, but I used to rate Smith Rowe highly. I used to yeah. really, yeah. really okay. like him. I thought he was a mega player. And I think, actually, you remember when Villa bid for him? I think they bid like 65 M's and Arsenal rejected it or something like that. Was it 60, 65 40, mil? 45, yeah, 45. Or oh, was yeah. it 45 mil? Yeah. And Arsenal rejected it. And, and to be fair, at the time, they probably were kind of right to reject it, to be honest with you, because it was probably on... The we ain't going to get that now, though, are we? we ain't well, get yeah, that that's now. the thing. You're not going to get that now. And his career has just fallen off a cliff. And it just, you know, it would have been interesting, especially because Villa are now cooking. It would have been interesting to see Smith Rowe, had he had gone to Villa in a team like that now. And he would probably would have been the main man in that creative role, how he would have been getting on. But, you know, you'd be looking to get 30 well, million for him. I look at Smith Rowe and I look at Jack Grealish and I see a lot of similarities in terms of style of play. Now, he's not at the level of Jack Grealish yet. But when I look at how old Jack Grealish was and how old Smith Rowe were at the same age, Smith Rowe was so much better than him in terms of a footballer as a youngster. The problem you've got is the development. And Jack Grealish was playing every single game and now he's an absolute baller. And I believed that Smith Rowe was going to have a similar journey and it looks like that's going to come to a halt now, man. The injuries hasn't helped him. And definitely Mikel Arteta hasn't helped him, man. There's opportunities that we could have played him in some of these games and he's just not done it. So, yeah, man, it looks like he could be one to be out the door. Oh my god, bro! Big news. Go on. Go on. Big, big news coming out right now. Breaking news as we're on stream. Manchester City are planning a big push to sign Bayern Munich's Jamal Musiala this summer. Where's the source for that? Uh, Jacob Steinberg. Go on, share it. Go on. 
Pep Guardiola wanting more options in attacking midfield. The 21-year-old is emerging as his top target. Breaking news. He goes on to say, Man City's interest in Jamal Musiala is advanced and they are at the front of the queue for the attacking midfielder. Chelsea are also monitoring the situation. <laughs> I love that last bit. Chelsea are also monitoring the situation. <laughs> Yeah, They're not going to get him, are they, over City? Bro, if you get him and Paqueta, my God. Oh. That is it. Right? Well, that, that's gonna, so that's basically saying he's going to be the KDB replacement then, right? Is that what we're saying? Uh, I, I imagine so. Because here's the thing, right? City fans City fans are right. City fans want Florian Burtz to be the KDB replacement. So do I. The City fans are correct. But the thing is, I just don't think you're getting Florian Burtz, bro. I think Florian Wirtz is nailed on for Bayern Munich. I think he's going Bayern. So I don't... Why, so, would, you, why would you go Bayern over you, though? Maybe, maybe Sane left to go Bayern because he wanted to be back in Germany. Maybe he just wants to be in Germany. Barella, apparently, Inter Milan doesn't really want to leave Italy. He just wants to stay in Italy. Mate, you know? Jamal Musiala is, is class, bro. Bro. I know he oh, weren't amazing hey. yesterday, but he's got, he is quality. He is quality. Like if you had, so you're gonna have, you're gonna have Foden, De Bruyne, Bernardo, or is Bernardo gonna go? I Bernardo's guess. gone. Right, so he's gonna go. So you're gonna have Musiala, Paqueta, Foden, and KDB as your four. Do not be surprised if Kevin De Bruyne leaves this summer. That's all I'm gonna say. What? What? Really? Do not be surprised if Kevin De Bruyne leaves this summer. How long's he got left on his deal? One year. What, you, so you go to Saudi Arabia? Saudis are all over him. Would he go there, bro? Saudis are all over him. I was told, right, in December that he's going Saudi, yeah? And I said, nah, bullshit. And I never did a stream about it. Never did a stream about it because I thought it was I thought it was fake news. I thought it was fake news, right? So I never did a stream about it. And then in, like, February time or something, all these new, all these links come out saying, "Oh, he's these Saudi clubs want him," and I was like, "Shit!" And I was told that in December, like, "What the fuck's going on?" And I sh and the chat, no, I'm not capping. I actually shown the messages. I put the messages on my screen to show them to prove it. Um, and uh, I just think if City get offered, I'm not saying that I would accept this, but if City get offered a hundred mil for KDB, yeah, that's for the FFP. That's insane because that's straight profit. Because KDB now he's been here nine years, so that's all that goes straight profit. That's insane for the for the accountants. You know, what I mean, the accountants out there will be amazing. I wouldn't be surprised if he left. I don't want him to leave, and I wouldn't. I wouldn't accept him. I would accept the hundred mil. I'd keep him, but it wouldn't surprise would me. Would you? How much would you say? Would you? How much would you accept, man? I don't really like doing that, bro, because for me, I'm not a I'm not an accountant fan. You know what I mean? I don't support a bank. I support a football club. No, so, like for me. It. Did you get me? It's like people always ask me that. Say, LB, would you accept 150? Like someone asked me, would you accept 150 for KDB if you got verts? And I'm like, the money, I'm not getting the money. I don't get a dividend. You know what I mean? <laughs> I, I ain't got stocks in the football club where, you know what I mean? If, if I got stonks in the club, yeah, and I'm getting dividends, then yeah, I'd sell him. I'd sell him 100 mil. I'd, I'd take him to Saudi myself. You know what I mean? Get me the dividend, mate. But I'm not getting the cash. So why am I accepting? It doesn't matter how much. It's like when people say, oh, your club spends money. I don't give a fuck, mate, how much more money. My, my club tomorrow could go out and spend a billion quid on Jamal Musiala. I won't care, mate. It's not my money. As long as the club ain't going to go bust, at the end of the day, it's not my cash. I ain't getting the money if we sell a player and they're not spending my money out of my pocket when they buy a player. Big up, man. I'm with you. Big up. So it's all kind of like too many people these days focus way too much on the money and that. And like we'll speak, we'll speak about the money. So like when we speak about like, oh, did you spend the money right or whatever? Yeah, that's fine. But like in terms of how does it affect me as a fan? It not affect me as a fan. So you get what I'm saying. So, but yeah, so what, what about this then? Saudi, Saudi Arabia offer you offer 100 million for KDB, and you can go and get Musiala with it. You'd rather keep KDB? Yeah, of course I keep KDB. 100. percent Yeah. Wow. That's that's hard, though, isn't it? Because like he is class Musiala of the future, but KDB is doing it now. So. It is, bro, but it's like, again, it's like... So the question I throw back at you is, why do I need to sell KDB to buy Musiala? 
No, no, that's what I was saying. That was that was the question, yeah. though. That was the. Oh, yeah, yeah, no, I, yeah, no, I know that. Yeah. That in, like, in real life, like I'd throw that question back at you and say, "Why do I need to sell to buy? Like, are we broke or something? Like, what's going on here?" But yeah, man, if we yeah. got Musiala, yeah, Paqueta, Bernardo leaves, Savio's coming in as well. Apparently, Savio is definitely going to be training with the um, with the squad in the preseason. Um, he's better than he's better than Doku, mate. That's for sure. Although Doku, yeah, last night, but... Doku, oh, Doku's had a couple of good games recently, man. Doku's a weird guy. I think Doku. I said when we signed him, I said day one we signed him because I watched him in this in his game for Stad Red. I said this guy, people are going to love him and people are going to hate him. There ain't no he middle ground with him. He is, my yeah, mate. he is. I give him a hard, I give him a hard time because I feel like he annoys me because I love watching players like that and I look at the output and I think, well, oh, and I, 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 I did this with Adama Traore. I was like. This guy's amazing. I was like, have you seen how good he is? Then I did it with Alan St. Maximan. Do you know what I mean? I did it with Awobi a bit when he was at Arsenal. These three players, they're like zero output. They look really attractive on the ball. Mm -hmm. So does Doku. But it's like, mm -hmm. what do you actually do? Do you know what I'm saying? Hasn't he scored like three or four goals or something? That's it. Yeah, it's yeah, just yeah. like, this is poor, man. So, yeah, man, I don't know. He, he causes havoc, but doesn't really get anywhere with it. So I'm a bit like that with him. But, uh, yeah, that's Savio. I hear good things, man. Really good things. Yeah, the, the thing that the thing I like about it is like Ovid Zain says it. I like having Grealish and Doku as options. Like you want a guy who can control the game, bring other players into the game, like Kevin De Bruyne, Foden, and hold the ball and do all that kind of shit. Like the more boring side, but quite effective, underrated side of the game in my opinion. Put Grealish on. Right, you want to you want a guy who just spams take ons. Doku, like it's good. It's good to have the options. That's what it's all about, man. It's about having options. You don't want two Grealishes. No one yeah. wants two Grealishes on the left-hand side. You don't want a Grealish A and Grealish B, yeah? But at the same time, you don't want two Dokus. So I think to have a Grealish option, to have a Doku option is fantastic. That's that's kind of where I want to be. Um, let me come through some of my super chats, man. Um, big up to Bjorn for that one earlier on. Big up to Off Meta says, get Kimmich, bro turned up the Arsenal as a six. Did he, did he, how did he play Kimmich yesterday? Because obviously we're linked yeah. with him heavily. Very, very good, mate. He's, he locked up. Mark, Mark, did he play DM, up. yeah? No, he played in the right back area. Uh, he had uh, Martinelli locked up in the first leg. Uh, their midfield was class, man. They had um, Goretzka and Lehmann. Both of them were absolutely quality, mate. And then Musiala obviously was part of that midfield as well. But Kimmich kind of does that. He'd be that inverting type of role. And he scored fantastic uh, header as well. Yeah, he'd be a quality player, man. But I had I was on a stream with I think it was Igal, you know, and he's like. Oh, that signing is just like a Thiago signing, as in Thiago Alcantara. Um, I would not want that anywhere near Arsenal. And I'm like, bro, this is the perfect signing for Arsenal. I know he's obviously looks like he's going to Man City potentially, but I can't believe how that's not a good signing if he wants to leave Bayern Munich. I think that'd be an unbelievable sign. He's 29, so experience. He can play in a number of positions. He's versatile. He's got great mentality. Mm. What is there not to love? I don't get it, man. Nah, weird. Weird. I think it's a mint signing. Uh, big up top matter again with another super chat says Edison's mental is elite. He's never faced. Oh, Edison's, I think the guy's tapped, man. I don't think he's he's all he's all wired up there properly, man, because he's too he's so cool under pressure. It's it's actually unreal. Um, it's a guy's a joker, bro. Jay says shouldn't uh, shouldn't have finished the job before pens though, LB. Oh, we should have. Yeah, we should have finished the job before the pens. Yeah, hundred percent. I mean, we should have. We had chances. KDB had chances. Harland had chances. Foden had chances. Like we had chances. Um, we sh it should never have got to penalty shootouts, one hundred percent, and that's been our problem this year. You know, in the big games this year, we're not lost many. We only lost two: one against Arsenal, one against uh, Villa, both deflected goals. Um, but we've not won many either. We're not, we've not, we've not won many because we don't score enough goals. And I suppose the only two that we did score enough goals was Chelsea and Tottenham. But Tottenham was a weird one because they scored some crazy goals. Chelsea was an, um, a bit of a strange one as well because we were shit defensively. But in the rest, we've just not scored enough, not killed off games. Uh, CB says, typical Champions League loss for City. We let them beat us again. Uh, we beat ourselves, man. CB, we beat ourselves. The game was there to be won. We created the chances. You don't score the goals, bro. You pay the ultimate price. We beat ourselves, man. It just is what it is. It's a shame. Uh, Jay says, Josh got at fault for the first goal. Messed up the defensive line. I have to look at it back, bro. For me, it's all Walker. Uh, he's he's playing him on side, and then he loses Rodrigo completely. I will watch it back and have a look. You'll see. He's done. Just... Is he done? Is he Walker? Honestly, I'd consider getting rid of him in the summer. This isn't a reactionary to last night. I just think this year, this year, no one can disagree. Whether you like Walker or you hate Walker, no one can disagree that this has been Walker's worst season at Manchester City. Yeah, defensively poor. Um, I don't think it's all his own fault. 
I say that. Pep's played him in stupid positions at times, like playing him as a right winger, which is ridiculous. He can't cross a ball. But um, I just think that maybe, maybe, maybe this is the year to get rid of him. And if Frimpong's available, 35 million, maybe they'll go for him. They've got Jan Kuto, who's tearing it up at Girona. Different style of right back and maybe a little bit of a risk to play him in the Premier League. He's not very physical, but I just feel that maybe it's time to move him on. I don't you know. Start, who would you start the Euros for England right back? Depends on my midfield. If I'm going aggressive midfield, I play Walker. You still have Walker, yeah, okay. Yeah. If I'm the thing is with Trent, bro, Trent's Trent's unbelievable, right? In terms of like his going forward. But in knockout games, can you trust him? I mean, it's funny because like Walker messed up yesterday, but like, can you trust like obviously you can usually trust Walker? Can you trust Trent? I don't know, maybe maybe you just fucking full send Trent. That's well, one thing I would say is my faith on Walker for the Euros has gone down. Like you asked me six, you asked me at the start of the season, I would have been like, yeah, Walker, not even, not even. And I still think I am going Walker, but there is there, is, I think there is a heavy shout now potentially to play to play Trent there. But that's what I do. Yeah, yeah, it don't matter anyway. We're not winning shit with that manager. No, um, I agree. <laughs> big up to Miro says, I swear the way English media are hyping the Birmingham Deli Alley, Jude the what the the what Bellerang? What's that? Bellerina. Bellerina. Are babying them more time on the floor than with the ball. Nah, says, that's a wild take, bro. I tell you what, though, bro, he wasn't good in either of the legs. He gets hyped up, mad. And Lee Gunner, yeah, Lee Gunner watches out all the Real Madrid games on Lee Reacts, yeah, because obviously he likes watching the Spanish yeah, football because yeah. he lives in Spain. And he said he's not been good that 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 much really this season. He's been hyped up massively, and apparently he got booed off a couple of weeks ago by the Real Madrid fans. Yeah, but that's not hard, is it? They boo everyone when they draw a game. Yeah. <laughs> but listen, I, I I really like him, man. I've been really impressed with what I've seen of him. And listen, I don't watch La Liga. I only see him in an England shirt and a Real Madrid shirt when I've watched the Real Madrid games. And I think he looks very comfortable for a 20-year-old in that amount of pressure with that number on your back, going to that amount of money. I think he's done very well, man. Mm. Yeah, no, defo, defo. Right, cool. Big up for coming on. Big up to everyone that's tuned in on It's LB. Make sure you are subscribed. Do me a favour. If you're watching on my channel, It's LB, because we're dual streaming this, go over to Football 12th Man Podcast. Uh, make sure you give Dan a sub. And if you're watching on um, on Football 12th Man Podcast, you'll obviously probably know me because I'm on the Race for Europe show. Get yourself over to my channel, It's LB. Just give us a sub, man. I appreciate all the support, as, as Dan does as well. Um, guys, up. make sure you drop a like on the stream as well. Big up to everyone that's sent in a donation. I've got a panel show coming up later at 7 p.m. on this channel with the lads. We're going to speak about last night. We're going to speak about Chelsea and sort of how that, how that, how that goes on. Yo, this guy's so shameless, man. Hi, LB. <laughs> you know, bro, didn't even make it out of the. This guy didn't make it out of a group stage. Yeah, can I just say something? <laughs> this guy didn't make it out of a group stage. Yeah, with Copenhagen, Copenhagen, and Galatasaray. Mate, we've had I've had this with Spurs and Chelsea fans all season, man. They're laughing at me, and I just think, you know what? You'd love to be in the Champions League and in the title race right now. So it's where it is, man. It's football banner. It always happens. Big up to Staffy, though, man. Yeah. What What's going on your channel, bro? <clears throat> so tonight there's nothing actually. Uh, just this here, and then but I will be on Lee Judges TV. Me and Judges are gonna break it down tonight. So I've told him I'll give him his, my time tonight because uh, yeah, he's not happy. 10 p.m. tonight on his channel. And we'll be talking all things uh, Arsenal and what we do with Mikel Arteta and what we do moving forward, mate. So, yeah, make sure you go over to Lee Judges TV. I'm sure most of you know anyway, know Lee anyway. But, uh, yeah, I'll be over there tonight at 10 p.m., man. Buzzing. Buzzing. Right, nice one, chat. Big up for joining us, man. Big up for the dual stream. Seem to work quite well. Make sure you drop a like. Make sure you subscribe. And we'll catch you in the next one. See you later. In fact, before I end, I'll, uh, I'll put a little cheeky redirect. I always forget to redirect to someone in it. Let me see who's live. Yeah, who is live? Uh, I don't even know. Who's live that we get on with? <laughs> Lee Gunner. <laughs> <laughs> Go on then. Lee, Lee's probably got about 12,000 people, 12, people watching him. But yeah. See you later. Time to sack him. <laughs>